Amen and amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I appreciate the good spirit we have this morning. Thank God for you, all of you being here. Don't forget you be right back in here tonight and Wednesday night. Enjoy the good things of God. Amen. Amen. Judges chapter number 16, if you would. Judges chapter number 16. Judges chapter number 16. And give you what the Lord has put on my heart. Let you be on your way. I think we're all going to meet over at uh, Marilyn Cook's house for dinner. I said, Miss, I said, Sister Marilyn, what you cooking for dinner today? She said, I ain't telling you. I said, Why? Are you afraid I'm going to come over there? She said, Yeah. I'm going back. Amen. Amen. I love you too, sis. Amen. All right, Judges chapter number 16. When you found your place, say amen. 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 Let's stand and rest your your backside a little bit. And let's all stand if we would. I'll read you just a couple of verses of Scripture and get right in the message, the good Lord willing. Amen. Amen. Look in verse number 30. The Bible says, And Samson said unto uh, said, let me die with the Philistines. And he's bowed himself with all his might. And the Bible says, and the house fell on top of the lords and the par- uh, all the people that were therein. And so the, di- the dead were he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. His brother and all the house of, of his fathers came and d- down and took him, brought him up. And buried him between Zorath and, and Esthereth, he said, in the burial place of Menor. His father, and he judged Israel 20 years. Let's pray. Our Father, we love you. Thank you for the goodness of the Lord. Thank you for the blessings of the day. Thank you for the good service. Pray that you'd help thy servant a little while. Pray, God, that you'd calm us down. And, Lord, let us preach what thus saith the Lord here today. Bless our time together, I pray in Jesus' name. Deal with every heart, every home. Here this morning, we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated this morning. If you've read this story and if you've been in Sunday school and if you've been in church long, you have learned or heard about Samson. And Brother Samson is, Brother Brian Samson is one of my favorite characters in the Bible for the things that he did. I like a man that has guts and God about him. And Brother Jimmy Sampson took the jawbone of an ass and slew a thousand Philistines. Don't you like that? He took the gates of the city and picked them up, took them at the top of the hill and set them on top of the hill. I like that. Took some cat or foxes, tied them their tails together, set them afire, Running through the city. That's my kind of man. Amen. I like a man's man. I like a man that'll that'll stand up for his convictions. I like a man that'll follow the Lord. And Samson did a lot of things. He killed a lion. Then went back after the brother Doug, the honeybees had got in there. He got him some honey. Amen. Amen. But the problem was, Samson was a a good man, a godly man, but Samson could not control his flesh. And Samson went down and found him a Philistine woman, and and Delilah was her name, and you know the story. He laid down his lap on on the, he laid his head on Delilah's lap, and the Philistines came in and cut his hair. And his strength wasn't in his hair, by the way. That wasn't his strength. He was a, he was a Nazarite by birth. The Nazarites, well, their custom was not to uh, cut their hair. And uh, the reason they did that is for humiliation. Brother, the people would make fun of people that's got long hair. And they would talk about him and they'd criticize. Because, by the way, it still says woe unto man. It, 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 the man shouldn't have long hair. Say amen. But here's, here he was. He got his hair cut, but it also lost all of his power. What a sad life. Here's it, at the end of his life, Samson was made sport of. 
Here's a man, brother, that had a more muscles than you and I, or not more muscles, more strength than you and I can ever imagine, Brother Dean. Broke chains. Broke ropes. All the other things that he did. But here he is now. They're making sport of him by the enemies of God. Plucked his eyes out. You ever wonder why Brother Willie plucked his eyes out? His eyes went down there and looked it on a woman. And they plucked his eyes out so they couldn't, he couldn't look on the flesh like he used to. In doing so, they really did Samson a favor. And then they put him down there in the prison, grinding in the prison. Then they brought him up, was going to make sport of him. Going to have a big party and going to make sport of him. And he grabbed a hold of two pillars in the, in the, in the uh, party room. And he told her, ask God to give him strength one more time. And he pulled down the strength, pulled down the collar, and the, everything fell. And the air, all the enemies of God were killed. And the Bible said that uh, Samson killed more in his death than he killed in his life. Wow. And so he started out with high expectations. A judge, judge over Israel, God's people. High expectations. But he lived beyond the boundaries that God has placed for his life. And can I say right here, just as a sidebar, God placed boundaries in our life, Brother David, not to him as in, but that he could keep the enemy out. Amen. A lot of Christians believe, well, we got too many rules. No, we ain't got too many rules. God didn't, he didn't put some boundary around our life to keep us, not to keep us in, but to keep the enemy out of our life. Amen. But here it is. He overran God's boundaries. And he died in disgrace. He died in disgrace. You say, oh, but preacher, He's in the book of Hebrews, in the hall of faith. That's right, he is. But that's not Samson's doing, Brother brother Daniel. That's God's doing. Samson didn't do anything, Brother Michael, to be there in the hall of faith. That just shows you God's goodness and grace. And that God can take a crooked stick and draw a straight line, Brother Charles, with it. That's what that means. So Samson died. He died... He died someone that uh, just like many, many other people have done. I know a lot of believers tonight, this morning rather, that have done a lot, a lot of things like, like Samson did. They lived for God. And then they fizzled out. But Samson did more than that. Samson did something that a lot of us have done. Samson dropped the ball. And I'd like to preach with this thought in mind, don't drop the ball. Here's Samson, brother, that had potential like nobody else. I don't know any other judge that tied the tails of foxes together and set them afire. I don't know any other judges that took the, took the gates and put them to the top. I don't know if any other judge did that but Samson. But here it is, Brother Michael. He dropped the ball at the pinnacle of his life. He dropped the ball when he should have hung on to it. I want to give us some reason here, and I'm going to be quickly this morning. I want to give you some reasons here that you should not drop the ball. Number one, and I don't know if I can get by the first one, but number one, we shouldn't drop the ball because God's been too good to us. Amen. You think back, Brother brother Michael, where God in heaven found you. Woo! Brother David, God didn't find me on a church pew. I lived in a, my daddy was a drunk and my, we never went to church, but somehow God in heaven reached down and found me and pulled me out of the muck and the mire, set my feet on the solid rock, 
establish my goings. I don't want to drop the ball because God's been too good to me. Amen. Amen. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him. And saved him out of all of his trouble. Amen and amen. Listen, you remember where God found you? You remember how far God's brought you from? If it wasn't for God, you wouldn't be in a church house this morning. If it wasn't for God, you wouldn't be singing the songs of Zion. If it wasn't for God, you wouldn't have a wife, you wouldn't have a home, you wouldn't have children. If it wasn't for for God, you wouldn't have a husband. Amen. God has given you everything. I don't want to drop the ball, Brother Will, because God's been too good to me. Woo! Amen and amen. He brought me out of that horrible pit. He brought me out, Brother Michael, that he could take me in. Amen. Amen. You remember, Brother Will, where God found you? Don't you drop that ball. Don't you drop that ball. Got a family to worry about. You got a ministry that God will use you in. You got a field that God will put you in. Don't you drop that ball. Hey, don't look at me, Mom and Dad. Don't you drop that ball. God's been too good to you. Amen. And God's given you everything you got. Hey, there's been times in my life, Brother Brian, Miss Tam and I, we couldn't rub two nickels together, but God, Brother David, has been good to me. And it ain't about material things. I don't care what we have in the cupboard, but God's been too good to me. Amen. I, I had clothes to put on this morning. I had food to eat if I wanted it. Hey, I had a, I had a warm house to stay in. Hey, I'm telling you, God in heaven has been too good to me. And I don't want to drop the ball here at the end of my life. Amen. I've gone too far to turn back now. Amen. Amen. God's brought me too far to let me go back now. Praise God. Woo! Amen. That ought to make us a Methodist shout this morning. Amen. God brought you where you was from. And he brought you and put you in the house of God. Hey, you couldn't, you didn't have to, God didn't have to give you a good church. God didn't have to give you good parents. God didn't have to give you a good preacher. God didn't have to give you a good place to worship. God has been too good to us. Amen and amen. Don't you drop that ball. God's been too good to us. Amen. Today we sit in the sanctuary. I got a Bible to read. I got this King James Bible to read. Amen. I got the Word of God. The inerrant, the infallible Word of God. I got it. God breathed on it. Woo! You get that? God breathed on it. His breath is in this book. Amen. Amen. I got a Bible in my lap. He put a song in my heart. Amen. Hey, listen, what are you saying, preacher? I'm telling you, we got a home in heaven. Too many blessings to count. We started counting our blessings. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. We got too many to count. Yeah, man, you ever sat down and just put on a pen and a piece of paper, started counting the blessings, brother, that God in heaven has given you. Hey, we don't have enough time or enough paper. Yeah, man. God's been too, don't you drop the ball now. God's been too good to you. Yeah, man, don't drop the ball. God's been too good. Yeah, man, number two, don't drop the ball Because your family's counting on you. I believe, Brother Larry, it's the greatest gift that God can give us outside of salvation is the family. Amen. Amen. Christopher called us this morning and uh, told Miss Townsend, put him on speaker, put him on speaker, put him on speaker. 
And he started talking, and, and all of a sudden I heard, Hey, Papa! My heart melted. Then I heard another little old fella over there. Hey, 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 Papa. Hey, Papa. I don't know. But uh, my heart melted. I love my family. Hey, man. And then they was competing against each other. Hey, Papa. Hey, Papa. Hey, Papa. Hey, Papa. Brother, that's, I almost give them $100 a piece to do that. But I love my family. I love my wife. I love our children, grandchildren. I love them. I love my church family. Whew. I love my church family. And Brother Kimball, I love y'all too much. But drop the ball now. Amen. Amen. Thank God for our family. Amen. Brother, Brother David, my, our church family is closer to me than a lot of my family is. I've got cousins I see once a year, unless somebody, unless at a funeral somewhere. I see them at Christmas time. Hey, and that's a lot of them. That's the only time I see my family. And a lot of you the same way, just two or three times a year. And I get to see y'all three times a week. Amen. I love my church family. I love my family. I love my church family. But I don't want to drop the ball because my family may be dependent on me not to. Some people think, and some in our family today may, may not be saved. Some in your family may not know God. Some in your family might, might not go to church, Brother Ronald. And they're counting on us not to drop the ball. So, Brother Ronald, you got family members that need God. And you got family members that are in church. You got family members that need to be saved. And they're looking at you. Don't you drop the ball. Don't drop it. I told these fellas that I called last night, I said, I'm going to throw this ball to you. I said, don't you drop it. I don't care if you have to dive over chairs. Don't you drop it. But, uh, but you've got family members that are watching you. That's why he comes right here and wants me to hand it to him. He, he, listen, you've got family members that are looking at you. You've got family members that are depending on you to stay right. You ever got a phone call from a family member that didn't know God? And they'll say, what, is, what does the Bible say on this? You ever get a phone call from, from your family that don't go to church? And, and they say, what, is it, what does the Bible say on this subject? Brother Keith, they're looking at you to do right. Brother Dean, they're looking at you to stay right and do right. Hey, they're looking at you, and they're looking at you, and your family is depending on you. You say, they don't care, they don't know, they, they'll never be saved. They might. I thought my daddy was way past getting saved. You know the story about how my daddy lived. One day at the church house, I watched him bow his old head, as mean as a devil. Watch him cry, big crocodile tears. Whew. You say, they ain't going to get saved. I, brother, Charles, I didn't think my daddy would get saved. Brother Vance, I watched my daddy walk that aisle. I watched him bend over, and I went down there. And the preacher was there, and the preacher Vance was there, and I was there. And I heard my daddy call on God. Whoo! I heard my daddy Ask God to come in his heart. Preacher, they ain't watching. They are watching. They are watching. Don't you drop that ball. Amen. Sometimes we want to just quit, don't we? Let's don't lie to each other. Here we are. Sometimes we want to quit. And I've heard preachers say this, and I, I ain't quit on Sundays, uh, on Mondays. I've quit every day of the week before. Not just Mondays. 
Oh, that's just another day. And I've heard people say, preachers quit on Monday. Well, I ain't never quit on Monday. I've quit on Sunday night after church. But Brother David, I've wanted to quit before. Amen. I've wanted to throw in the towel and say, you can have it. I'm telling you, my family depends on me. You got children that are looking at you. Look at these babies around here. My Lord. It's a, it's a good sight, ain't it? One day they're going to up, grow up and they're going to need to be saved. Down the road, they're going to need to be saved. And they're going to need you, Mama, to stay right. They're going to need you, Daddy, to stay faithful. Don't drop the ball. Amen. Don't drop the ball. Hey, even though we want to quit, even though we want to turn around and walk the other way, God in heaven says, don't quit, don't quit. My family depends on it. Amen. I've got two grandchildren now. They're going to have to be saved down the road. They, and and, and I hope I'm around when they do. Amen. Why? Because they love Papa and they love Gigi. And, and Charlie loves this church. And she loves to come to Papa Gigi's church. So she can go back there in the Sunday school room and, and pillage and steal all the candy back there. She loves that. She loves that. I want my family. I want Brother Ronald. I want to know. I want, at the end of the day, Brother, when I close my eyes in death, Brother, I want my family to say he was a man of God. He was God's man. I want you as a church to look back down the road when I close my eyes in death. And I want you to say he was God's man. Brother, I don't want to drop the ball. I got too much family depending on me. And you do as well. Amen. Amen. Hey, our family, Brother Ronald, is looking at us as living epistles. They're waiting on us not to drop the ball. We may be the only Savior they see. Don't drop the ball. Don't drop the ball. We shouldn't drop the ball because the Lord's been so good to us. Shouldn't drop the ball because the Savior's been, ain't, because our family de, de, is looking at us. Number two, number three, is, is sinners are watching us. Now you look around at work, and you say, well, it ain't nothing down there with a bunch of heathens. Well, that's probably right. It's the same way it was when I worked. A public job ain't nothing but a bunch of heathens. There ain't nothing but a bunch of, bunch of hell raisers down there. Party on the weekend. Fornicators. That's probably right. That's probably right. Amen. But they're looking at somebody. They ain't looking at somebody that lives like they live. No. They're not looking at somebody that walks the same uh, trail that they walk, live the same way they live. They're not looking at them. They're looking at somebody, Brother Ridge, that's different than they are. Amen. Watching us and see what when the storms of life hit our family and hit our life, they're watching us and they're seeing if if we're gonna stay right when the storm hits. Don't drop the ball now. Because sinners are watching you. When storms hit, Brother Michael, they're gonna see you and they're gonna see you and Miss Bonnie just to see how y'all gonna weigh this thing out. They're going to look at you, Brother Larry, and look at you, Brother Doug, and look at us, and, and Brother Warren, they're going to look at us, and they're going to say, do, are we going to do right? Are we, do we going to have the stuff? Or are we going to quit when storms hit our life? Amen. Watching us. Are they going to let us watch us stay the course? Brother Doug, are they going to watch us just stay right in the middle of the road? Stay with God. Stay with the church. Stay with the word of God. Are they going to see that? That's what they're looking to see. Hey, they're, they're, they may be hoping in the back of their mind, Brother Will, that, they, that, you, that they, you fall in the same trap that they're in. Hey, that misery loves company. They're also wanting to see if you're going to do right. If you're going to stay with God and you're going to stay with the church and you're going to stay with the Bible. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen. Hey, listen. What if, what if, 
You say, well, it ain't making a difference in our, nobody. It, it ain't making a difference in nobody's life. What if that you never know, Brother Derek? What if when you get to heaven, Brother David, somebody comes up to you, taps you on the shoulder, and says, hey, I want to let you know, Brother Michael, back down the road I was watching you, and I was seeing Brother Vance, if you was going to stay faithful to God, and Brother Brian, if you was going to stay in church, and, and when that thing hit your life, and that problem come up in your life, they was going to see if you stayed with God. And I, I watched you, and you stayed the course, and you stayed with God. And I one day, I got saved, and I'm here, because you stayed with God. Woo! Amen. Don't drop the ball. Sinners are watching you. Amen. The sinners are watching. They don't need, they want to know if we're going to hang in there. Don't quit, don't quit, don't quit. And don't drop the ball. Don't drop it. Y'all fellas look good on the front row. Amen. Last of all, let me give you this and we'll be done. Don't drop the ball because the Lord's been too good to us. God's family are counting on you. Sinners are watching you. But lastly, don't drop the ball. Brother Frank, because heaven's just in view. Just in sight. Amen. Don't drop the ball because we've come too far to turn around. We've come too far and we're just around the corner, just around the bend from seeing the Lord. Amen. It won't be long till, until the Lord will, God will call out and that shout will take place from heaven. And, and, and that shout will say, come on home. It's supper time. All of our troubles will be over. No mores will happen. No more sickness. No more death. No more pain. The no bores will really happen because the former things, Brother Keith, have passed away. Michelle are passed away. Heaven's in view, Brother Michael. Don't drop the ball. We're almost there. We're, 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 this, we're this close. We're at the finish line. We're at the last of the last days. We're at the last hours of the last of the last days. Now, I don't, brother, brother Kevin, I don't want to quit now. I don't want to drop the ball now. It's just any day now we'll see the Savior. Just any moment now feet are going to lose gravitation and we're going to take off in the sky the graves these, these hope chests that we put our <coughs> our loved ones in those graves are going to burst open and brother Dean we're going to get to see our loved ones all again and those that's run out of here those that's left us brother we're going to get to see them again We're going to get to see them again. I don't want to drop the ball now. I don't want to lose it now. I can't lose my salvation. Once you're saved, you're saved forever. But, but I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose what I got. I don't want to lose uh, my rewards. I don't want to drop the ball now. Amen. Brother David, we're going to get to see the Lord face to face. <laughs> Woo! We're soon to leave this world. Amen. It'll be a glad reunion day, won't it? We'll see the Savior. I said Wednesday night, and I, I didn't say it. I probably didn't come across like I wanted to, but... We'll see the Savior and worship Him.
But everywhere we go, we'll see the Savior. If you go to the tree of life, we'll see the Savior. If you walk down the street of gold, you'll see the Savior. If you go by the water, the, the river of life, you'll see the Savior. If you go to the throne of God, you'll see the Savior. If we, if we go to our mansions, Brother Danny, if we go, we'll see the Savior. Everywhere we go in heaven, the Savior's going to be there. We're going to get to see him. Finally. See him face to face. Finally. There's a homecoming and coming. Home is just in sight. There'll be a glad and wonderful day in that, that great day. And all of God's promises are going to be in plain sight then for all eternity. So what I'm telling you this morning, please, please, don't drop the ball. Miss Norma, how about if you would come and play a moment? Don't drop it. There's too much to lose. But Larry, we've got, we've got too much invested in this. God's depending on us. Amen. I want God, Brother Ridge, to look down there at Morse Memorial and he see a group of people that are, are committed to not dropping the ball. Down there here at Kaiser, where the, where the world knows nothing about us. God's looking down here at a group of people, Brother Will, and he's saying they're committed not to drop the ball. The world knows nothing about us. God does. Don't drop it. Let's stand our feet, heads bowed, eyes closed. I wonder how many would just get in the altar somewhere and ask God to help you not to drop the ball. There's too much depending on you. Too much depending on it. Not to lose, not to gain. Hey, don't, don't drop it now. Don't drop it now. We've gone too far. We've gone too far.